Good morning, afternoon, or evening. This is McGarren. Just going to do a 7-in-1 wireless weather station review and box opening and also installation. So we'll have fun with this. But I picked the Logia 7-in-1 because it looked pretty durable and it gave me the information that I wanted to have at my fingertips locally for my orchard so that I know uh, what the temperature is, uh, how much rain I'm getting, and also the UV index so that I know how much more I need to water besides just looking at the leaves. I, I know that's the most important way, but give me a break here. This is fun technology stuff. All right, so opening up the box here, you can see inside the box I have the instruction manual. There's nothing underneath it, I mean, except for the bigger part of the box. But here's the user manual and instruction for installation. This is the monitor for the whole entire sensor system, which amazingly enough, this sensor came with an indoor sensor and an outdoor weather station, which I was not expecting. I was expecting only just the outdoor weather station. So here is the outdoor weather station as I'm unwrapping it. And you can see um, that the nice big container there, that is the rain measurement system. And then the nice little cups on the side are wind speed. And the other side is wind direction. And it comes with a solar panel. It, it's not for the batteries, I don't think, but it has a UV sensor. Maybe it just runs off of solar during the day and then uses the batteries at night. I'm not sure. And then this is the indoor sensor that comes in the package, which is interesting enough. And this is the nice little water collector that I will show you how to install a little bit later. It has some rubber pads and a small 2032 battery for the monitor and also a power plug for the monitor, as you can see right there. First off, let's just take this cap here, put it inside and rotate it. That's the first step that it says to be able to do the install. As you can see, turning it upside down, it's not going to fall out because it kind of clips into place. Most of the plastic seems really durable. And um, just showing you there that the direction of north is where the plastic cup is supposed to be directing for the wind sensor or for the water sensor. And we have a clamp here on the bottom part. Uh, the plastic is pretty strong and hard. We're going to see how well it holds up against the possible 60 mile an hour winds. Both of these require batteries. You need two AA batteries for the indoor sensor, which does temperature and humidity, which I just installed there by pulling off the bottom and putting them in their correct direction. And then the other requires a screwdriver for the weather station. Just unscrew that nice little part that is underneath the solar portion, and it requires three AA batteries. So put those in the correct direction. And there's supposed to be an LED light at the bottom that will flash every 12 seconds when you install the batteries. Um, I didn't ever see the LED light flash, which I waited for a good solid minute to see if it would flash. And nothing is plugged in. I just installed the batteries um, so that I can sync the sensors a little bit later. Here we have a J-pole. There's a 13-inch J-pole, and it's the same one that is used for satellites that you can install on your wall. It doesn't come with this. I had to buy it separate. I bought it on Amazon for, I think, $15. To hold a durable weather station, I needed to have a durable arm that was adjustable to different angles so that I can make sure that it stays level. So in this package, it comes with, comes with some anchors. I don't need those because I'm just going to be drilling it into treated wood that is holding up the muscadine vines. But as you can see here, there are three bolts. They have squares at the end so that you need to put them in on the square end. There's a circular side and a square side. Make sure that you're putting the bolt through the square side so that it, um, you only have to worry about tightening it with the nut side. To be able to secure it with my hand, I'm not tightening it down too much. Then the th smaller ones you put on the inside of the tube 
facing outward because the inside of the tube has a square shape and the outside is rounded. So it will secure the nut from the inside. Look at that adjustability. Beautiful. All right, gonna put these lag bolts through the metal and secure them to the wood. It should look like that so that I can adjust it. All right, how about we go outside and install this thing? This treated lumber is kind of set at a slight angle so that when more weight is applied to it, it'll be vertical. So I need to have it at a certain angle. This drill bit is a 1564 drill bit and just gonna drill the holes in towards the center of the wood so that it won't split onto the edges. And I'm going almost all the way down. This is a four by four piece of wood. Here is a half inch black bolt driver. Gonna use that to be able to secure it. Now, when I'm drilling it in, I don't wanna secure it all the way. Just put the lag bolts in um, so there is some movement on both sides and then I will secure it once I know that it is level. Now I take the level and I determine if it is level. It, it was relatively close. It wasn't spot on, but it doesn't really need to be. Here, just kind of tightening in that bolt because that is where level, at least in that direction, is located. Now I'm going to take the actual arm and tighten it with this 10 millimeter ratchet. And here I take the 10 millimeter, tighten it up slightly on one side, and then I'm going to double check and make sure that it is not level, but plumb in both directions from the left side and from front to back. So there are two screws on the side that you unscrew to be able to open it up. And once you have access on the inside of it, as you can see there, there's the two little rubber mats. They have adhesive on the back side. You wanna make sure that you put them on the smooth side of this clamp. If you put them on the other side, they won't really adhere very well. So I'm putting them on the smooth side, the first one, and then it comes with a second one. There you go. There's the adhesive side. Put it down so it can stick to it. Slide it on that metal bar and clamp it down. Now, one thing before you start to clamp it down, you gotta make sure that that is pointing to north. If that is pointing to north, which it basically is right now, then I can take the screwdriver and secure those screws in place. You wanna make it tight, but not too tight that it will break the plastic. You wanna just make sure that it's secure and that little rubber adhesive inside there is gonna help out with making sure that it is secure and it doesn't rotate or move back and forth. All right, now I have it secured. I got a compass and had it make, made sure that it was pointing to true north so that that sensor will get sun all the time and also the light sensor, which is at the very end of it. But as you can see right there, that little bubble inside the level should be centered. If it's not quite centered, I don't know if it's really gonna make that much of a difference, but I mean, that is pretty close to being centered. Look at that thing, beautiful. Yep, good zoom in right there. Beautiful stuff. It does look pretty neat. Looks like a spaceship that is just hanging out on the side of the orchard. So I'm kind of digging it. Now, nothing is connected. I have just installed it, and it does have a wireless adapter in there so it can communicate with the monitor inside the house. So here I have the monitor, and if you flip it over to the back, there's a part where you can use the battery. Ta-da! And you put it in its place, do a nice little rotation. It was a little hard to get it open. And you make sure that the positive side is up if you don't know which one is positive, it has a plus sign on it and it's flat. So the negative side has multiple bumps on it in a circular direction. There you go, put it in, tighten it, and also use the plug that comes with it that is off to the right-hand side and you gotta plug it in. So that battery is just for backup. This plug is for the power. Now I have it plugged in. You can see a couple of numbers that are sitting off to the side there, but here's the sensor. I open up the battery compartment and inside is a reset button right there off to the left. I'm using the little clip to press the reset button, hold it down for a couple seconds and it will reset 
the sensor because the monitor was not picking up any of the information. So I press the sensor or the reset and if you look off to the right in the screen, you will see that it picked it up. And here I go, lifting it up for you so that you can see it is 80 degrees and 46% humidity inside of my house. That's pretty darn hot. Now, here's the other problem. Um, it wasn't picking up the sensor outside the weather station. So you go to the weather station. On the bottom part, you can see there's a little reset button. And you take a little wooden dowel or a pencil, press the reset button for a couple of seconds, and there's an LED light in the bottom right-hand corner. That is supposed to flash. It never did flash for me, but I went back in. It took about a minute or two before it was able to connect to the monitor, and now you can see that everything is working. It's 86 degrees outside, it's 78 degrees inside. On the top right-hand corner, that is the in, inside temperature and humidity. And then on the left, it says out, and that is the outside temperature and humidity, along with it feels like the sun index, the forecast, the wind direction is right there in the middle, the barometer and rain that is not going to change very much. So I'm pretty happy with the installation. It went pretty smooth. Um, just follow the instructions in the guidebook. Beyond that, I have no complaints. I will probably send an update in about six months on my thoughts about using this and whether or not it lasted through some of our awesomely winded areas. If it didn't, you know, that, that kind of sucks but i hope this lasts for at least five years that would be nice it is plastic and it does get to 110 degrees which really wreaks havoc on plastic here in santa jorge utah so um i hope this was informative and please let me know your thoughts did i buy a good one or a shoddy one i don't know but please let me know because um it would just be nice to know if this does break down pretty soon i might just go and buy a different one all right, beyond that, have a stellar day.